Hello everyone, welcome to Tips and Tricks. In this video, we are going to see about few interview questions that have been asked in LNT, Tata Projects, SPCL, URC and many other civil engineering uh, companies. So without any further ado, let's get started. And before we start, I would really appreciate it if you could smash that like button, drop me a comment and share this free program with anyone who might need it. So the first question here is, what is a flat slab? So the answer is, in conventional buildings or slab systems, the load transfer is like from uh, the slab, then to the beam, then to the column and then to the foundation. That is, when we use flat slab, this can be avoided and the slab, the load from the slabs can be directly uh, transferred to the columns. So uh, that type of slab is called as a flat slab. And in flat slab, instead of beams, we will have two things called the drop panel and the column capital. They, uh, these both will not run throughout the length of the uh, slab. They will be provided only where the columns are there. So where this flat slab can be found is in underground parking systems. Because in underground parking system, already the basement height is going to be very less. And there, if there are going to be beams, the beams are obvi will obviously be heavy because they are in underground and because since it is the lowermost part of the building it will be carrying more load and the beams will be very heavily reinforced so in order to avoid that we will go for flat slabs next question is the difference between pre-tensioning and post-tensioning of tendons in pre-stressed concrete structures so the procedure for pre-stressing uh, pre-tensioning in pre-stressed concrete structure is first the wires or tendons are stressed that is they are pulled and then the concrete is cast, poured and uh, sufficient strength is achieved and after that the con uh, tendons are cut. So after that uh, since the tendons are cut the transfer that will be transfer of stress. So something which we have to keep in mind is that here the stress is transferred only through the bond strength. throughout the transmission length of the tendon. Next step is post tensioning. So in post tensioning, first the concrete member is cast. Then uh, while casting itself, we will be providing ducts to place the wires. Next after proper curing and proper characteristic strength is achieved, the tendons are inserted. And after the tendons are inserted, they are pulled, they are pre-stressed and anchored to the end of the member. So here what we are doing is here, we are uh, first uh, the thing is cast and the, with the ducts next the tendons are passed then they are pulled then they are anchored at the end so here the strength or uh, the pre-stress is transferred via the anchorage bar anchorage blocks so these anchorage blocks they uh, contribute to the large part of the stress transfer and the bond stress will uh, contribute to some extent if the tendons are grouted that is, if the ducts are uh, grouted in later stage. If they are not grouted, then the bonding will not be there. And the next question is, advantages of pre-stressing. We know that in pre-stress, we will use high strength concrete and high strength steel. Because of that, I mean, uh, shallow sections can be achieved. So, light members can be achieved. Therefore, saving on the foundation cost. Next, the pre-stress members tend to perform better than RCC members in areas of crack prevention and stress handling. Next, since the concrete remains uncrapped, that is in type 1 and 2, uh, we have three types of uh, pre-stress members. There are type 1 members, type 2 members and type 3 members. In type 1 members, uh, there is no tension, uh, no tension is allowed and no cracking is allowed. In type 2 members, cracking is not allowed but some tension can be allowed. In type 3 members, uh, tension is also allowed. Cracking is also allowed, but this cracking, it should be within the permissible limit. So these are the three types of precious concrete members. Therefore, in type 1 and 2, there is going to be no cracks present. So since there is going to be no cracks, the full moment of inertia can be utilized for taking the loads. And since there is going to be no cracks, steel corrosion is prevented and shear cracks does not occur. And this can be uh, very useful in structures like water retaining structures like uh, uh, tanks or something because there is going to be no cracks at all and therefore no leakage. The next advantage is it is suitable for precasting. Since it is uh, suitable for precasting, all the advantages of precasting is also applicable. 
Next, longer spans. This is the span to depth ratio. In RCC, the span to depth ratio is 28 to 1. Here it is 45 to 1. So it is obvious that it can be used for longer spans. Next question is advantages of steel over concrete. We know why we go for steel for industrial buildings so that there will not be any supports between two ends of the building. That is one of the main reasons. So uh, that is what is given here. Longer spans without supports can be made and faster construction because everything is already casted. And next advantage is easily assembled and erected. Uh, this is uh, true only if there is sufficient space for erection. Next is since it is lightweight, the transport cost is less and so is the foundation cost. And due to the ductile behavior, we will not experience sudden failure. There will always be yielding and we will always have warnings before any sudden failure, before any failure at all. Next, uh, high strength and stiffness per weight when compared to concrete structures. Next, there is no need for form work. These are some of the advantages of steel over concrete. The disadvantages are uh, corrosion, is uh, there is high risk of corrosion and high initial cost and skilled labors are uh, required. Not all people are very well versed with the design of steel structures. The next question is what is M20? M20 is a concrete mix ratio usually 1 is to 1.5 is to 3 that provides a 28 day compressive strength as 20 Newton per millimeter square and how will you find it what is the equipment used to find it by using compression testing machine explain briefly about the CTM process CTM is compression testing machine the process is the concrete cubes according to the mix ratio are casted after 28 days they are taken from the curing tank and allowed to dry for 24 hours or sometimes even 12 hours is okay then the cubes are placed in the CTM machine and loaded till failure and the load at failure is noted and that load gives us force and we know that M20 is 20 Newton per millimeter square this is a stress so stress is force by area we need to know what is the force and that force will be given by the load at failure that will give us the force force divided by area we already know the area of the cube force divided by area will give me the compressive stress this is how we will find the uh, compressive strength of a cube using CTM. Next is what is the size of the cube uh, used to cast? It is 150 by 150 by 150 mm. Next, the rate of loading of CTM. This is very important. It is 140 kg per centimeter square. The next question is, instead of a cube, if I use a cylinder, will my value reduce or increase? What they are asking is, uh, this is my cylinder, this is my cube. Instead of uh, using a cube, if I use a cylinder, uh, when I using uh, when I'm using a cube, if I get twenty as my uh, twenty newton per mm square as my answer, what will be uh, my compressive strength if I'm using a cylinder? Whether it will increase or decrease? The answer is the value will reduce, and the reason is why is uh, the slenderness ratio of the cylinder is more than the cube, therefore less load is sufficient to cause failure. This is also uh, explained by the size effect. Uh, say if you are using a smaller cube of 100 by 100, that will give a higher value of compressive strength. So you can either use this logic or you can use slenderness ratio uh, to come up with this answer. And when it is asked uh, for the reason, uh, giving slenderness ratio as an answer will sound more professional. That's it guys. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, I'll be posting more videos on this topic. Uh, so please feel free to comment below on which topics you would like to hear interview questions. Thank you so much for listening guys. Bye.